So, I've played incrementals for a few years now, and I'd say I've gotten quite a good grip on them, how they function, what works, and what doesn't. In fact, I've even made a few of my own. There are a lot of incrementals out there, and out of them, some are good, some are decent, and some, well, they, they, they exist. But what exactly is it that makes an incremental good? First, let's talk about the incremental genre as a whole. Incrementals themselves have a number that's increasing, simple as that. Often, incrementals are divided into two subcategories, clicker and idle. Clickers are essentially an incremental with something to click. Idles are an incremental that runs without you playing. Cookie clicker, for example, fits both of these, because there's the cookie to click and the production buildings for idle profit. Personally, I dislike clicking elements because they pretty much leave the player with two options, arthritis or an auto clicker, and neither should be necessary to enjoy a good game. Also, if clicking is way more powerful than idle profit, it's unbalanced and, in a way, not an idle anymore, because constant attention is required to progress. Tap Titans had this problem, because in that game, tapping was way more powerful than idle profits and got you much, much further. Another example would be Egg Incorporated, which in the late game had the problem where nearly all of your production came from random drones that you needed to tap. As opposed to making a game one or the other, I'd prefer a game that balances the active part so that you get more profit when active, but still progress fairly well while idling. Also, a simple way to remove the problem of constant clicking is adding a timed interval to the clicking, like the game Black Market did it. But aside from all this, the most important thing about any incremental is having a goal. Something for the players to crave, to reach for. In my opinion, the best goals are having features unlock at certain points, and showing the player where those points are so they can aim for them. It's like telling the player, hey, you get more content when you reach this milestone. It's a great motivator, encouraging players to push further into the game to see the contents. One good example is Realm Grinder, with its reincarnations unlocking more stuff. The problem with how Realm Grinder does this is that it doesn't clearly indicate to the player what unlocks and when. The only way to know that is through guides, which could be done more effectively. But even if you have a goal to shoot for, it doesn't matter if the game is unbalanced to the point where it would take too long to reach the goal. Also, having overly repetitive gameplay kills a player's motivation to continue. One example of this would be Five Leaf Clover. While the idea behind it is definitely cool and original, the gameplay feels too repetitive and it quickly becomes uninteresting. One way to combat this is adding more gameplay, and adding something to automate the old gameplay once the player achieves mastery in it, to avoid an abundance of micromanagement. Like Voldemort said, the definition of insanity is doing things over and over again, expecting shit to change. Okay, so now your game has goals, a good balance between idle and active play, and balanced, not too repetitive gameplay. Next, I'll talk about the user interface, UI. If a game shows the player too many things immediately after opening the game, it'll just confuse players. You don't want to show too much stuff at the start of the game. Make things unlock gradually. Use goals, like we talked about earlier, like this tab unlocks in a million donuts, or whatever. While most popular incrementals do this well, a good example would be Trimps. It unlocks stuff gradually as you progress, and doesn't throw everything at your face at once. A bad example would be Demon War Idol Rebellion. I stopped playing it immediately when I saw the UI. It could be the most fleshed out incremental with the deepest lore and the most fulfilling gameplay, but a cluttered UI kills the game immediately. Also, making your game overly complex can harm players' experience. Something like Sandcastle Builder, which pretty much requires a guide to be played properly. A game can and should have complexity and depth, but if you expect the player to know everything about the game with no instruction, it's just bad development. On the other hand, trial and error type discovery in an incremental game can be awesome, and some of the best games in the genre do it. The problem with this type of discovery is that it's incredibly hard to implement correctly in a way that doesn't frustrate the player. So if you aren't certain that your idea for trial and error discovery is good or not, I'd err on the side of caution and either run it by some people or just not implement it. So now you have a good game. Obviously the next step is to fill it with microtransactions and ads that are almost required to play the game, right? No. And somehow, this is the step that so many mobile incrementals seem to mess up on. Don't get me wrong, ads and microtransactions, while often demonized, can be completely fine. But if they become the center of attention in your game, that's not good. For example, Adventure Quest Dragons had this button where you would gain 30 minutes worth of reduction by watching a single ad. It turned the game into an ad watching simulator. A microtransaction centered game would be Civcrafter, which had upgrades that you could either wait to apply or use the microtransaction currency to speed up substantially. 
The genre has by and large become stale. Most people are publishing clones of knockoffs of remakes of original games, and the only people that are suffering from it are people who actually like incrementals. There's agreement that change has to be made, but most people don't bother to learn what that change is before making their own incremental game. So wrapping up, if you're planning on making an incremental or want to help out someone who does, tell them about these points. Let them know that if they want people to enjoy their game long term, they need to balance active and idle progression. Tell them to have features unlock on a steady basis, and not to space them too far apart just to artificially lengthen the game. Show them good UIs that don't throw every single feature that will ever be unlocked into a person's face, and for the love of god tell them not to publish a cash grab filled with unnecessary microtransactions and ads. 